cross-examination does not allow them to ask improper questions at the end and try to end the big flourish. And that's what, that's what we saw here. And when you told him how to ask the question, he went back to his seat and chose to ask God no further questions because he didn't want to ask it the right way. So all we're trying to do is let's, let's make, keep the record clean. Let's make it fair uh, and, and not be prejudicial to this defendant, even though the jurors probably weren't listening by this point. But, but, I, but I, can't, I can't assume that. I've got to get the record the way it should be, Your Honor. And that's why, that's, that's why we're very serious about this. And ask you to, to clean that record up. All right. Thank you, Counsel. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sheck, how much more do you need to, how much time do you need to get uh, geared up and get your videotapes ready to roll? It, Ten minutes? It's the only reason I said that is I, I'm sure I won't finish this afternoon. No, oh, I know you won't finish this afternoon, but uh, let's assume that you got 10 minutes to get your tapes together. Yeah, I have 10 minutes to go to 430 is no problem. Okay. All right. Are we going to start at 430? No, we're going to take about 10 minutes. So I can get rid of a few things, and then we'll start at uh, 4:40 or so. And uh, some of the jurors in our lineup uh, have doctor's appointments, so we may only get to three of them today. Okay. No, you're taking away. You're taking away from Mr. Sheck's time to prepare. No, I won't. It's about the it's about the presence of the defendant at the at the at the hearing at the appropriate time. You asked about a case. I want to share something. All right. Well, share it with me when we take our 10-minute okay. break. Bye. All right. Thank you. Mr. Darden, good afternoon, sir. Are you here for some reason? Standing? To watch the trial, Your Honor. All right. But, uh, but beyond that, if I may, so that I might uh, clarify a point on the record the other day, Friday I indicated to the court that we had recovered certain documents from uh, Mr. Mark Elliott. And, and that we had recovered those documents not by SDT. In fact, they were recovered uh, by SDT in lieu of our execution or obtainment of a, uh, a search warrant. I would like to turn over to uh, the defense today a contract with St. Martin's Press. It involves Mr. Elliott and uh, Cato Kalin, as well as a transcript of an interview uh, Mark Elliott had with Cato Kalin, and which apparently served as a book proposal uh, for Mr. Kalin. Thank you. All right. Record will reflect that you're handing it back. Why don't you give it to Mr. Douglas? Uh, Darden, you indicated that the uh, copies of the, what was it, 20 tapes of uh, interviews with Mr. Kalin that you turned over to the court? Yeah, the court has 15 or 16 15 audio or 16. cassettes. Uh, you indicated that those can be turned over to the defense for their copying, correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Sheck, are we ready? All right, let's have the jurors, please. All right, Mr. Sheck, Mr. Sheck, you may begin your recross examination. On redirect examination, Mr. Fung, uh, do you recall that it began with a number of questions about uh, conspiracies? I object this ability to call the testimony as irrelevant. Or you recall that? I don't know what, where it was, but yes. Do you recall questions to the effect, are you in a conspiracy with Detective Lang, uh, Michelle Kessler, who hu her husband, whoever that might be, or Detective Furman against this defendant. Remember that? Irrelevant. Do you remember being asked if you were in a conspiracy with Ms. Mazzola to cover up receiving some item with your bare hand? Something to that effect. All right. uh, do you remember being asked if you were in a conspiracy to allow uh, Detective Lang to get into the evidence processing room and somehow get DNA on swatches? Remember a question, something to that effect also. And you answered all those questions, no. That's correct. Right. Now, uh, let me ask you, uh, have you ever heard the term cover-up? Yes. What does that mean to you, sir? When something, somebody does something wrong and cover their tracks, um, you try to s show that they didn't do anything wrong. Or they try to protect them from being discovered. 
Yes. Uh, and that one, have you tried, sir, to cover up mistakes by yourself or others that occurred during this investigation? I have made corrections through proper channels, um, but I have not tried to cover up any mistakes. In your testimony, sir, in the way you answered questions, have you ever tried to cover up mistakes that were made by yourself or others? No. Have you tried in your testimony to cover up misconduct by anyone? No. Mr. Fung, in the course of your, you were asked a number of questions about the way you normally testify. Yes. All right. Now, when you testify, sir, do you revise your recollections of events in order to make it, make your testimony come out in a way that you think favors the position of the prosecution? No. At any time, sir, have you claimed not to remember some event one way or the other uh, because being vague in your recollection would help cover up mistakes or misconduct? Not on purpose, no. Not on purpose? Uh, no, I have not. Um, now, Mr. Fung, haven't you repeatedly been changing your testimony about what you told this jury you independently remembered based on fear of being caught uh, in inconsistencies or lies by videotapes? Sustain the phase question. Have you repeatedly changed your testimony about what you independently remember based on looking at videotapes? Sustained. Have you ever have you ever changed your testimony about what you said happened because you saw a videotape of those same events? Overruled. I have looked at videotapes and my memory has been refreshed during the course of my testimony. Well, haven't you just offered some testimony this afternoon where you told us that you had no independent recollection of events, but you could only piece together and reconstruct things based on what you saw in a video and still photos? Oh. I was able to reconstruct events by looking through videos, looking at videos. Right. Events that you have no independent memory of whatsoever. That's big. Now, before you came in here and testified at trial on direct examination, you had seen a video of Andrea Mazzola picking up the glove and the hat at Bundy and putting them in a paper bag. Yes. And so when you came here and testified at trial, you did not testify that you had seen, that you yourself had collected the hat and collected the glove and put it in a paper bag. Well, it's unintelligible in the way that it's phrased. Sustain. Rephrase the question. Did you testify at this trial that you had picked up the hat at Bundy and the glove at Bundy and put those in a paper bag for later processing. I don't and recall that I said that during this trial, no. You didn't say that during this trial, right? I don't think so. No, on direct examination, you said Ms. Mazzola had done that. Is that a I, question? Yes. Right? I don't remember everything I said, but that's not, that's what happened, yes. But in the grand jury, sir, and I'm now at uh, page uh, 337 to 338, starting at line 8. All right, hold on.
337. Mm -hmm. At what line? Actually, I'll start, start on line 23 to save time. Question. In photographs A, B, and C, do they actually depict the glove in the location and condition you found it? Answer, yes. Question, what did you do with respect to that glove? Answer, initially I measured to see to locate where it was found, documented that location, and then placed it in a paper bag for later processing. You asked those questions, did you give those answers? Yes, sir. Oh, the answer was fine. Now, you testified, sir, that when you went into the grand jury, that you did not have an opportunity to have extensive conversations with Ms. Clark about your testimony. Yes. Oh. Did you have any conversations with Ms. Clark about your testimony before you went into the grand jury? Only brief, a brief conversation. And you were testifying on June 22nd? Or thereabouts. And that was only nine days after this uh, collection that occurred at Bundy? Yes. And the events certainly, sir, were fresher in your mind on June 22nd than they have been when you've been testifying at this trial? Yes. And because you hadn't spoken with Ms. Clark before you went into the grand jury and you were going to be asked questions, you wanted to make sure that your testimony was as accurate as possible about what you could remember. Oh, well. When I testified at the grand jury, I wasn't trying to mislead anybody and I was trying to tell the truth. Trying to be accurate? Yes. And your memory was fresher than it is here today? Yes. But you told us on redirect examination that you have this habit of saying, I did something when testifying, even if you didn't do it. When I am working in a team and I am the supervisor of that team and I'm calling the shots and I tend to use I when asked questions of procedure. Well, wait a second. I thought that one explanation you gave for why you said I in the grand jury was this concept in working as, as a team, correct? Yes. Well, didn't Mr. Goldman ask you other questions about uh, testimony at this trial about your habit of saying I did something when in fact you didn't do it but someone else did? It's irrelevant what questions I asked. Overruled. He did ask questions to those effects. Is that a habit that you have all the time, sir, that when somebody asks, what did you do, you tend to say, uh, I did it even if you didn't do it? I have gone over the grand jury testimony and other testimony in this trial, and I have found that that's what I tend to do. When you testified at the grand jury, I'm now at page 379, line 8. Were you asked these questions? Hold, hold on. Mr. Goldberg? Which line 8 through what? No, line, actually, line, starting at line 5. Thank you, Your Honor. Question. <clears throat> Were the blood drops next to those 
shoe prints. Yeah, I'm going to object to this. Uh, we've already gone over this twice. It's asked and answered. Oh, well. Were the blood drops next to those shoe prints? Answer, yes, they were. Question, did you attempt to retrieve and preserve the blood found in those blood drops? Answer, yes, I did. Question, what did you do? Answer, I transferred the blood drops onto, onto cloth squares or cloth swatches. What I did was wet the cloth swatches with distilled water and then applied them to the stain, the red stains, which are later determined to be blood, and they were transferred in that method. Were you asked those questions? Did you give those answers? Yes. Now, you weren't asked anything there about documenting uh, uh, and measuring drops, were you? No. You weren't asked anything about uh, mental processes, were you? The collection phase, or the collection process includes those parts. Yes, but the question you were asked is, what did you do, right? Yes. And the answer that you gave talked about what you did in terms of putting cloth swatches on the ground and putting water on them and taking up blood, right? It's part of the answer, yes. Well. Wasn't that the entirety of the answer when you were asked, what did you do when you talked about transferring the blood drops onto claw squares? You were describing your physical actions. Sustain. You were describing in your answer your actions nine days previously. In that answer, I was describing the procedure for which the blood was collected. You weren't asked the procedure. You were asked, what did you do, correct? Sustain, argumentative. Were you asked, what did you do? Asked and answered. Oh, well. Yes. You were not asked, what was the procedure generally? But that was my interpretation. Well, on other occasions, um, in the grand jury and at the preliminary hearing, didn't Ms. Clark ask you questions about what general procedures were? Irrelevant. Oh, well. She may have. But this question was, what did you do, right? That's what that question was. And it's your testimony, sir, that in answering those questions about the blood drops found at Bundy, it never occurred to you at all that it would sound better to testify that you did it and not Andrea Mazzola. That did not occur to me. It was just this habit of answering questions where you say, I did something, even if you didn't do it. Just that bad habit. Well, it's overbroad. Sustain, rephrase the question. But we've about exhausted this area. Well, just do one more. Quick one. One quick one. One quick one. Now, with respect to the red stain on the Bronco, I'm at the grand jury page 390, line 6. Question. How did you recover them? Certainly. Hold on. Line 6. This question. Sure. Do you have it in front of you, Mr. Fung, by chance, your grand jury testimony? No, I do not. Just that question and answer. I went into 
into this, council went into this, I think it's the third time. One last question. And this question was in reference to the red stain on the Bronco and all the drops at Rockingham. Question. Hey, wait a minute. Just read the few lines before that. Proceed. Question. How did you recover them? Answer. I recovered them in the same manner described before, where I would wet a wet cloth swatch or several cloth swatches if needed, apply it to the red stain, and then let the stain transfer onto the cloth swatch. Were you asked those questions and did you give those answers? Yes. And the fact is, sir, that the only stains where you took a cloth swatch and put them onto the ground were numbers 55 and 56, two footprints at Bundy. No, I did do actual swatching with some other stains but the, along but those, the trail. You're now referring to you actually showed Ms. Mazzola a better technique as she was swatching and did one or two yourself? No, there were times when I would take the tweezers go through the uh, substrate control collection, go through the swatching of the red stains with, with a cloth square and putting it in a plastic bag. There were times when I did that. Didn't you tell us previously, sir, that it was Ms. Mazzola that did the swatching of those stains at Bundy? The stain. Now, you were asked on uh, redirect examination that at the preliminary hearing, you actually mentioned Ms. Mazzola. Yes. Um, and you were asked questions about how you were not in any way reluctant to reveal what her role was in the collection of evidence when you testified at the preliminary hearing? I did reveal her that she was part of the um, search team, yes. Well, but you were in no way reluctant to reveal how much of the collection and swatching she actually did. No, I was not. And uh, Mr. Goldberg read you part of this. I'd like to re read the rest of it from the preliminary hearing. I'd like to read you a segment Wait from a minute. Wait a minute. All right, proceed. Preliminary hearing, July 7th at page 39, starting at line 17. Now redirect you. 17 through what? 17 through the next page to 21. Question. How do you collect blood stains from a crime scene? Answer. Generally, stains are transferred onto a swatch by first wetting the swatch with distilled water, applying it to the stain so the blood is absorbed onto the swatch, and at that point it is put into a plastic bag and then put into a coin envelope where it is labeled with the corresponding photo ID number. Question, now is it also your job, sir, to package all of the evidence you collect and label it as, with what is known as a DR number? Yes, it is. And did you do so in this case? Yes, I did. Now I'm directing your attention to items number one through eight. Did you prepare a report documenting what items numbers one through eight are in this case? Answer, yes, I did. Did you collect them, sir? Answer, I did, along with my assistant criminalist, Ms. Mazzola. Question. Now, that, up to that point, do you recall Mr. Goldberg reading you that on redirect examination? Yes. All right, let's read the rest. Question, is that another criminalist with the Los Angeles Police Department? Answer, yes. Question, do you usually send two criminalists to a crime scene? Answer, not always, no. 
question, what was this criminalist doing with you on that particular day? Answer, she was there to learn how to process crime scenes. Question, you were showing her how it is done. Answer, yes. Were you asked those questions, did you give those answers? Yes. And when you said that you, she was just there for you to um, show her how it is done, were you trying to convey at the preliminary hearing on national television that you did most of the work and she was just there observing? Your Honor, this was gone into on cross, and, it hasn't, and I didn't ask about this quote on redirect, so it's That was not my intention when I answered those questions. That, All right, counsel, we'll be on their time now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as far as the jury and presentation of evidence in court today, we're going to stand in recess. However, as I indicated to you, I'm going to be uh, talking to some of you this afternoon uh, one at a time. So as far as the presentation of, of evidence is currently concerned, we will stand in recess. Mr. Fung, you may step down. You're ordered to return tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. All right. And we'll take a 10-minute uh, recess to recycle. I want to see counsel over at sidebar with the court reporter, please. <laughs>